Now, I uh, wanted to get uh, Colonel Roberts on for, for quite a while, and, and uh, he's joined us today. Uh, Colonel Craig Roberts landed in Vietnam in July of 1965 as a automatic rifleman with uh, Hotel Company, 2nd Battalion, 9th Marines. He served with the Tulsa Police Department for 27 years. Uh, in 1985, Roberts transferred to the Army Reserve, 95th Division, and served in various battalion and division uh, assignments, including intelligence. Roberts returned in 99 as Lieutenant Colonel Infantry Air Operations, 11A5U. His last 12 years were working as a ground liaison officer in the intelligence section of the 138th Tactical Fighter Group. He's the author, best-selling author, New York Times best-selling author, Crosshairs of the Kill Zone, The Medusa File, Doorway to Hell, Disaster in Somalia. Uh, he's best-selling author of One Shot, One Kill, A Sniper Looks at Dealey Plaza, RifleWarrior.com, one word, helicopter pilot for the Tulsa Police, SWAT team, you name it, uh, investigated Oklahoma City. And, we're, and, and now for the next 50 minutes, we're going to cover the waterfront uh, with Colonel Craig Roberts. Uh, Craig, uh, just overall, what do you make of the state of the world and so much of what you wrote about 15, 20 years ago coming true? Well, you know, it's amazing, Alex, because, uh, you know, I had police officers that I worked with that uh, on the department that uh, several of them thought I was absolutely off the deep end and was wearing a tinfoil hat when I went home because I was talking about all of this stuff well in advance. I talked about 9-11 well in advance of what had uh, happened. I wrote about it in the Medusa file, uh, talking about the different types of terrorist targets. When we were working the Oklahoma City bombing, I t I, you know, having uh, my intelligence background in the military, being trained as a counter-terrorist, there, you know, we know there's five types of, of uh, terrorist targets. You know, we've got mass transportation ground, mass transportation air, a large gathering of people, which we call the Black Sunday or the Super Bowl effect. Uh, then we've got uh, a public building and a private building. In 1993, they blew up the World Trade Center, or tried to, um, you know, the Ramsey Joseph case. And uh, that was, you know, that was a, a public or a private building. The next thing we had was uh, Oklahoma City, which is a public building, which is a government building. And the next thing we had was the Amtrak derailment out in California or out in Arizona, uh, which was mass transportation ground and then the next thing I said we're going to have a, we're going to have a major airliner go down and, and it wasn't just a few months later we had TWA 800 get shot down and it was shot down and anybody thinks it was a center fuel tank explosion is living in la la land uh, then we predicted 9-11 as a large gathering of people happening someplace and it happened and uh, so you know we talked about all this stuff and you know here 15 years later I've got these uh, same police officers that have come to me and said, do you know any place out in the country we can buy property and move to because the whole world's going to do exactly what you said it's happened. It's, uh, the economy's going belly up. There's traitors in the, in the White House. Uh, you know, the, the entire world right now is on the brink of total disaster. Now, these are guys that, that uh, 15 years ago thought I was a lunatic, and now they're coming to me for advice. So, uh, you know... When you have cops doing that, then you better you better stand by because there's a lot of people who work in cubicles and you know they may listen to the radio, they may watch some TV, but they're more wrapped up in you know their their Saturday and Sunday and Monday sports and you know what they're going to do when they get off that night and things like that. And uh, unless they lose their job and get desperate, they don't pay any attention to what's going on in the world. And right now today, we're seeing all kinds of stuff not happening just here, where this country is getting ready to go belly up financially. Uh, but we're and, we're and our food supplies are, you know, we're, we're having problems with that. We're having problems with our water supplies. We're, you know, there's all these things that are happening. We're having more um, major emergencies in the world today than we have ever had before. And, you know, you're looking at tsunamis, volcanoes, earthquakes, hurricanes. Florida alone, what, last Giant year? Giant fires, uh, uh, reactors in Nebraska flooding, lying about Fukushima. And uh, you go over all of this. I mean, there's obviously a hand involved. We know they have weather weapons. There's so much to get into with you today. But you, uh, you mentioned financial collapse. Here's the Financial Times of London today. Dollar seen losing global reserve status. I don't think people realize that America has to be brought down before the world government, which they've openly announced. I mean, think about that. All the publications now saying a world government is the answer to our problems, a world private bank. That's what we always knew was coming. Now it's here. America has always been the castle on the hill. The rest of the world has always been the peasants outside the castle. They are now storming the castle. They're doing everything they can. We are under siege economically and uh, commercially. And, uh, you know, our borders are, are wide open, and we've got uh, globalists, you know, in Washington, D.C., in the government right now, from the White House on down, they're doing everything they can to turn this into a global socialist society. 
And when you don't enforce your own voters and you send, you know, the legions far afield, so to speak, we've got them in Afghanistan and Iraq and South Korea and who knows where, uh, and there's no one home to watch the chickens, then we are ripe for the picking. And right now, that's where we're at. And they're succeeding in doing what they want and ignoring the law, ignoring the Constitution, ignoring the voices of the people, and they're totally out of control of the people, but they're not out of control of the globalist. The Council of 13, the Council of 33, George Soros, all the rest of those groups that are all intertwined and doing everything they can to bring, bring this country... And by the way, the CIA, U.S. intelligence, you've told the stories, you know, people in high-level intelligence, they all know this. This is not a secret... Uh, and expanding on that, they're, they're creating the crises to then offer the solution. Um, going through these issues one by one, um, breaking down the fact that the First World Trade Center, the FBI cooked the bomb, trained the drivers. Uh, it, you know, we're not saying there aren't Muslim extremists. The point is there's an unseen hand, the underwear bomber, helped to get on the plane by the U.S. State Department, now on record, over and over again. In Egypt, they're putting them in. They're using al-Qaeda to go after Qaddafi. This is all admitted. From your research into this, can you explain uh, for newbies what the New World Order, you know, Globalist Council is, what their goal is, uh, and how they use terrorism to take our liberties? Well, you know, the, the uh, what we call the New World Order is not new at all. It's, you know, at least 200 years old. And it goes back to the to the ancient families of Europe who, who uh, you know, conspired together to take over the various monarchies of Europe. You know, and you can talk about the Rothschilds and all the rest of them, the Bowers and so on and so forth. But the bottom line is there's a core group of pure evil. And uh, they conspired, you know, decades and decades ago to come up with a plan on how to take over the world. Well, you do it one country at a time or two countries at a time by pitting those two countries against each other. You know, the Rothschild plan said, you know, you support both countries in, uh, during war and loan them money, and at the end it doesn't matter who wins or loses because they're both in your debt, and debt is power. Now, they, they turn around and they run the economic systems of countries, and they can control the jobs, they can control the banks, they can control the flow of money, they can control the value of money, they control the gold and the silver and the other precious metals, they control the jewels, and then that is total control. Politics, political control means nothing to these people as long as they're the ones calling the shots. And they've been doing this, you know, for decades and decades. And what they've decided was the way to rule the world is to rule the world by, eight, by, by controlling the world's assets. That means the food, the oil, the water, the air we breathe, the weather. Now, the, today, they, that's an asset, uh, because if you can make it rain, you can make it flood. If you can make it dry, you can make it drought. You, you know, and so they're able to control these different various things. And uh, right now, the, the, the whole thing is being able to take all the countries in the third world status and elevate them the first world status, and because you improve those countries, they're, they're all in your debt and they're all very grateful to you and they follow your orders. But to do that, they have to, get this, redistribute the wealth and open the borders of the first world countries. You know, I used to give lectures and I would say, uh, can you name one second world country? There'd be 100 people in the room and no one even knew what I was talking about. What do you mean a second world country? Well, we talk about first world countries and we talk about second world countries. This is what we've been programmed to believe exists. But can anybody name a second world country? And basically, a second world country is what you have when you redistribute the wealth, and that includes the assets and the resources from the first world countries to the third world countries. Open the borders, you know, to, uh, take from the rich, give to the poor, all the rest of that communist nonsense, and you elevate them to second world status at the same time, you reduce us to second world status, and then we have a one world order, or what we used to call the new world order. Everybody's on the same plane except the rulers. The mega rich uh, basically creating a collectivist society where the general public is absolutely dependent on them and will do whatever they're told. This is domestication. Now, part of this program is the police state, and we talked about that this morning. Your view of the TSA, the clergy response teams, the spy grids that are going in. And when you get the internal documents that we were sent years ago by law enforcement, None of it even has to do with Al-Qaeda. It's all about gun owners, landowners, Ron Paul supporters, people that want to end the New World Order. Uh, expand on that. Well, it all has to do with control.
control. If you can't control every element of society, you're not the boss yet. You're not in control yet. So you have to be in control. One of the, one of the things you have to do if you're you know if you're trying to subjugate a population, you you have to disarm it. You know, it doesn't do any good for the peasants and staff pitchforks because you might get stuck. So you have to do everything you can to disarm the peasants. And if you can't disarm them, at least reduce their firepower. Uh, you know, just talking about the guns alone, in this country, you know, we had the Gun Control Act of 1968. Uh, we've had the Brady Bill go through. We've had all of these things that started out back, you know, in the 1930s, you could own a Thompson submachine gun and buy it at any hardware store. Today, you have to get a special license to own an automatic weapon. Uh, you can't own anything larger than a, a, a certain size caliber, blah, blah, blah. Then, uh, you know, that, that takes us into this Operation Gunwalker and so on and so forth. If they can't legislate uh, through Congress more gun control than they've already got, what they want to do is they want to regulate us through emergencies, uh, such as, uh, gee, look at all the guns that are going to Mexico and causing all of the, uh, the havoc below the border with the drug cartels. All the drug cartels are getting these guns out of our gun shops. There's no control over the gun shops, blah, blah, blah. Well... Anybody who believes that has never bought a gun. If you go into a gun shop today, you fill out a two-page form with all your, your statistics on it, you answer questions, and if you answer any of them wrong, including straw purchaser, that's a felony, and you can go to federal prison. But we know the vast majority of guns in Mexico, where they have a total gun ban society, are bought from the military. They're grenade launchers. They're fully auto. They're German. And so the White House, two years ago, started demonizing and said, we want to ban multi-sales, you know, semi-auto, via fiat, uh, uh, via emergency, as you said. Those memos are now public, and now we've caught them because good ATF guys went public, and that they were knowingly helping get them shipped down to Mexico, uh, and, 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 then, and then they lied to Congress. I mean, this is incredible. Oh, yeah, and, and you know, you've got, you've got go people going in there buying hundreds of guns, at a gun dealer, and a gun dealer's screaming, hey, this is not right, I shouldn't be do this, and you got ATF people saying, no, go ahead and do it, we're, we're in charge, everything's okay. So the ATF is telling uh, private business to violate the law and become criminals themselves and be felons by violating federal law. They're not on the federal payroll, they're not law enforcement officers, they're not obligated to do this, and when they do it, they're putting themselves in jeopardy. So now, if they turn around and say, no, well, we'll file charges on you because of what you already did in the past. That's right. It's a Whitey Bulger tactic. I mean, it's, it's, it's the government becoming mafia. We'll be right back uh, with Colonel Craig Roberts. We're going to continue to look at Operation Fast and Furious. We'll talk about the TSA. We'll look at uh, what's happening in the Middle East and a lot more. Stay with us. They lie and say it's our guns, so they start going to gun shows. They did it in Austin and have any legals go in and all day try to do a private purchase, not, a, not from a gun dealer, but somebody trying to sell their private gun to shut down, quote, the gun show loophole, which is nothing but gun registration. And then they go into these gun shops and tell them, you're going to sell hundreds of guns, and now it's starting to come out. It was basically the ATF had set the whole thing up. It was their sub sub-criminal group, that's what they're scared is about to come out fully, coming in and buying them, then bringing them back, and then trying to get them back into the U.S. or trying to connect them to crimes in Mexico to frame the Second Amendment. And, and, and I said this a year and a half ago. Now they've been caught doing it. Uh, Colonel Craig Roberts looking at this, uh, there should be an immediate move for impeachment immediately. I mean, is this not uh, seditious behavior against the republic? Oh, absolutely. It's, you know, I mean, when you go out and purposely violate the law, violate your own laws, uh, you know, how, where, where does it stop? You can't do that. You can't have, you know, we just had three police officers here uh, go to trial, and one of them ended up going to prison after doing over 20 years on the police department. He was, he was already retired because at one time, the, the way that they handled their, their informants and the drug deals and the drug money and what they were doing with it and so on down the line, uh, and they ended up, as, I mean, as soon as this one guy got convicted, when he stood up, two marshals grabbed him and hauled him off. Now, he'd been a police officer all his life. And that was very small compared to what we see uh, that happened in Arizona with this gun walker thing where it went on and on and on and on. And they're saying, well, we're following these guns. You can't follow those guns across the border. The Mexican government wasn't even involved in it. Mexican law enforcement, which is about as corrupt as their government, it wasn't involved in it. There was no way to track these guns. What they were doing was they were making sure that hundreds, if not thousands, of guns were ending up 
south of the border that could be traced back here so that when they did end up in crimes on our side of the border, we could say, look, these came from American gun shops because they knew that if they didn't supply the guns uh, and make sure that they got down there, that the guns they did find would have come from Colombia, uh, you know, Panama, uh, Costa Rica, you know, Guatemala, uh, El Salvador. Germany. Yeah, Germany. Now, remember, though, this is the same ATF that likes to pull stunts like Waco. And they did the little detonation test blowing up a rider truck months before OKC. And they were the boys that showed up a minute after in their full bomb suits and told folks, patch them up. They've been on the ninth floor. I mean, these are some really nice people at the higher levels. But then you've got the good ATF guys blowing the whistle on this. Uh, internally, I mean, I mean, this is a group of criminals. Well, yeah, and here now, now here's another deal. You got you got a, one just one drug cartel down there has 19 airliners, four engine, two engine jet airliners that they can fly anywhere in the globe hauling drugs. They can fly to Russia, they can fly to the Middle East, and they can trade those drugs for all the fully automatic Kalashnikovs and AR or M16s or uh, FNFALs they want, and bring them back by the caseload and grenade launchers and RPGs, and they could buy tanks if they wanted them. You know. By I mean, the way, now they've got giant armored vehicles that look bigger than uh, Blackwater's Grizzly. Yeah, they, they call them the narco tanks. I mean, these these. But insane. they got that at a gun shop, Colonel. Yeah, right. They just went in and got one. Uh, they had probably a dozen of them out back. Uh, <laughs> these, these people, you know, are capable of getting anything they want, anytime they want. They've got all the money in the world to do it with. They've got all the contacts to do it with. They don't need some piddly gun shop in Tucson, Arizona, to sell them guns. Our government has people in it that says, oh, wait a minute, we can't have that. we got to have our guns end up in the hands of the narco -terrorists. Look, it, it, is it not a false flag? I mean, is this not stage terror? Yeah, it is. It's create the problem so we can have a solution. Stay there, Colonel. Back in one minute. Uh, the Project Gunrunner whistleblower is under fire, even though the head of the ATF has been caught lying uh, e uh, in emails. Uh, n now we know lied to Congress that they did know what was going on. They said they knew nothing, but it turned out the highest levels ordered it and had video cameras installed in the gun shops. I mean, this is a big deal, Colonel Roberts, because if they've been caught uh, setting this up, lying to Congress, lying to the public, and doing it to blame the Second Amendment, and they'd already launched the demonization by the time they got caught, uh, and, and the head of the ATF is refusing to step down, where is Congress hauling this guy in where's the justice department oh the head of the justice department was the deputy head of the justice department who helped cover things up at okc now i understand why nobody's getting in trouble well you know we first we've got a weak congress there are a bunch of weak sisters up there you know the tea party guys went up there but i haven't seen them really do a lot yet uh and the they all get up there, drink the Potomac River water, and they all become part of the system. It's it's just uh, you know uh, it's just out of control. But the thing about it is, every one of these people in this chain of command that not only thought this up but implemented it, and then and I'm not talking about the field agents that were told to do it. I'm talking about the brass needs to go to prison. It's as simple as that. They broke the law intentionally, and they did it uh, for some very terrible, evil purposes, and that was to subjugate the Constitution, pure and simple. I mean, let's just get to the point here. And every one of them needs to go to trial, and they need to go to federal penitentiary, because if they don't, no one in the world can be guilty of a crime again, period, in this country. It's, that's just the way it is. If they skate, everybody should skate. They might just open up all the prisons and let everybody out. Because, you know, it's, there's no such thing as someone that's immune from the law just because of their position or who they work for. And, uh, you know, we, we got police officers who go to jail all the time, politicians that sometimes go to jail. But, you know, I saw this Blagolovich. What, what's his name? Blagodovich? Yeah, Blagojevich. Yeah, I can't ever say it. But anyway, he gets convicted on, what, 17 counts? Yes. And I don't see him in jail yet. I don't see him doing the perp walk yet. I don't well, see more than that, he's obviously a slime bag, but they've destroyed most of the tapes. We know Obama and, and all of them are involved in the same stuff, and, and, and Obama getting free houses and all this. And, and we see a low-level vice president at Citibank getting, uh, you know, indicted for supposedly stealing $19 million, but he stole it from the bankers. But then when mega banks like Wells Fargo and uh, their subsidiary are caught laundering $376 billion in two years, confirmed they did it, they don't even get in trouble. So, so they always burn little low-level people. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, if, you know, if you start, if you start chasing, and like I did at, uh, in some of my books, 
if you start chasing the narco money over the last 30 years, or all the way back to Vietnam, let's go all the way back to uh, 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 the, the Golden Triangle days when Shacklin Kleins and, and all that bunch were there, uh, and all the opium was coming out of the Golden Triangle in Laos, uh, and you start following everything from the Nugent Hand Bank to the WDNBB or whatever it was, Bank in Honolulu, to the... Uh, 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 BCCI, uh, you know, the Bank of North uh, Little Rock, and all the rest of these banks that are involved in money laundering, and to Iran-Contra, and to the cocaine coming out of the Medellin and Cali cartels that were set up both by the CIA, or at least by T Ted Shackley. Uh, you start chasing all this stuff, and then you find the money goes into Middle Eastern banks, it goes into the Caymans, and it goes into the New York City mega banks, and that's where it gets laundered. So the, all the drugs that they buy in Mexico eventually gets laundered through New York City and the mega banks, so they're protected. It's incredible. And uh, they then bust some of the low-level competition and then fill the prisons with nonviolent offenders while the violent go free. Colonel Craig Roberts is our guest. We're going to continue picking his brain on a host of issues. We're going to get his take next on the TSA and see what his view is of the overall police state here on the Republic. We'll get more into the economy as well with Colonel Craig Roberts on the uh, Going over some of the headlines with Colonel Craig Roberts of RifleWarrior.com who joins us. Fukushima and Nebraska, rising floodwaters threaten nuclear catastrophe. Locals told us two weeks ago this was going on. Now AP and others confirm it. And uh, they're on generator power, and it, it's it, with the his, history of the government lying. Who knows what's going to happen? Los Alamos has had fires go right up to their facilities, and that whole area is radioactive from testing. So the fires reignite that and put it into the atmosphere. Radiation levels are going up, so the EPA has just raised the level of what they say safe. Also, cancer surges and body scanner operators. TSA launching cover up. This could bring the whole thing down. That the government knowingly they've got the internal memos. Uh, from the TSA people that the, uh, uh, of them covering up the, the cancer clusters and the fact that they're being blasted with radiation. Just incredible information in Paul Joseph Watson's article. Please get this out to everyone. Cancer surges and body scanner operators, TSA launching cover-up. Uh, also, uh, Greek Prime Minister says austerity is patriotic duty, even though 90-plus percent of the money is not owed by the Greek people. This is the central banks bought off their president and finance minister and got them to sign on to the debt. It's called too big to fail. Then you give them your tax money, then they charge you interest for you giving it to them. Yeah, that's how dumb they think we are. Uh, continuing, a final Senate version of TSA bill in Texas, instead of stopping the TSA groping, authorizes it. Now, now that's incredible. The first bill said Fourth Amendment. Uh, you have no reasonable uh, suspicion. You have no probable cause. Well, now the bill says, well, Texas redefines reasonable suspicion. So the bill was going to put them in jail. Um, and it would force them to actually engage in reasonable suspicion. Now they're saying reasonable suspicion is just that you're at an airport. And it's actual, the Texas Law Enforcement Association made up of political, you know, police chiefs that are mainly federalized. They came out and went to Texas and said, we don't like this. We, we want to do what the feds are doing. This is a great new horizon. So they, so David Dewhurst, the minion, and, and also Strauss, the Speaker of the House, along with uh, Al Gore's former campaign chairman, uh, the, uh, Rick Perry, they killed the, they, they killed the bill and brought it back and changed it, saying that basically the TSA can give your one year old a proctology exam. Now that's political spin. We're going to tie your hands by by throwing you in the briar patch. Exactly what you want, Colonel Craig Roberts. What's your view on the TSA as a Marine, as an Army Colonel, as a as a police officer, an investigator? What is your view of the TSA? Well, it's a typical deal. It's uh, it's a it's an agency created out of thin air all of a sudden on overnight utilizing personnel that had no training, no experience, and no expertise, and very little education. Uh, I remember right after 9-11, they, they just made, waved a magic wand, and all of these uh, lower low-grade uh, uh, magnetic gate screeners that they had hired off the street as civilian contractees that worked for civilian companies with a different company at every airport all of a sudden became federal agents. No training, no academy, no understanding of the laws, nothing. And so you had a lot of uh, these people who've got the, uh, the, the uh, wider syndrome, power went to their head. I've got a badge, and I'm powerful, and I can be tough, and, and look at me, and, and I get to be the, the drill instructor here at the airport, and you're going to line up and do what I say. It may have been uh, uh, also on purpose that they did this because you've got people like that who are basically like the brown shirts uh, that 
all of it eventually because you have to go someplace because you have to get on an airplane because you have a schedule to keep because you've got relatives to visit business to do whatever you comply with get in line shut up take a number do as we say and once we get that uh, that cattle uh, mentality and uh, we submit to that then it's very easy to control a population you control a population many ways but one of the ways is by making them psychologically malleable to uh, following orders, don't ask questions. You Bingo! Know? And now it's spreading to high school proms with the TSA. Now it's spreading with the TSA is going to train and, ma and wave a magic wand. And now Texas police, New York police, are suddenly allowed to grab your genitals and go down your pants. And now they're changing the definition of uh, reasonable suspicion to, well, you're at a public place or uh, we f just feel like it. I mean, this is really the end of our common law, the end of basic liberty. And it's the same thing that the British citizens uh, went to war with the King of England over because they he was stomping on their rights and doing the exact same type of garbage. Okay, now here's the deal. There, what do we do to stop it? Well, it's real simple, but no one's addressing the issue. What people don't understand is we, we be, we've become this follow orders, do as you're told, don't make waves, the, the, the nail that sticks up, get the hammer, keep your mouth shut, and then it, it, they'll get somebody else. They won't bother you. You'll be able to go on your way. <clears throat> what you have to understand is that is when you look at the mechanism as a whole. You cannot look at the TSA as this big machine with the federal government that has all this power. The way you have to look at it is you don't fight City Hall. You fight the individual in City Hall that you're going after. And what you do is any TSA agent that violates your constitutional rights, such as the groping and the Fourth Amendment stuff and all that sort of thing, you file on them. You sue them personally under 42 U.S.C. 1983. That makes them personally, their, their government position cannot protect them in a 1983 lawsuit. Well, you know as well as I, police have authority to make arrests, to, to do all those things, because they they are making a citizen's arrest. And in the incorporated city under state law, the people are hiring you to be designated citizens with special uh, training and weapons, uh, but, but, uh, but hired by us to serve, to go out. And it's the same power of citizen's arrest that does that. As soon as an officer steps out of the Constitution and Bill of Rights, they no longer have immunity. Citizens have immunity to shoot a robber coming in their house, just like a cop has the immunity to shoot a robber if he comes to a house and catches him in it and the robber tries something. So it's the same power. They're trying to train us that we don't have that power. Or they're trying to tell us that out-of-control police are above the law or TSA are above the law. But as soon as they step out of the Constitution, they're wide open. Well, that, that's exactly right. And, and, and uh, you know, 20 years ago, I had to go to in-service at the Academy one day. <clears throat> went in, and a lawyer was there talking to us about 1983 lawsuits because they were starting to occur around the country. I had never even heard about it. And uh, basically it was if we stepped outside of our, our, our uh privileges given us as law enforcement officers by the Constitution and given to the citizens by the Constitution. If we violated their civil rights, uh, you know, whether it's our, the, the Fourth Amendment or whatever, if we violated, we became then personally responsible and were not under the protection of the department. And on top of that, you can add vicarious liability. Vicarious liability says, I'm not only going to sue you, I'm going to sue your boss and your boss's boss and your boss's boss individually and go after your bank accounts, your pensions, your houses, and everything, and you can't be protected. And this is a attorney. big secret. Like Ventura is personally suing, um, uh, I was about to say Reno, same, same lady, different time, uh, Napolitano, Mr. Napolitano. Uh, sorry, Mr. Maddow. I'm sorry, Janet Napolitano. I, I get them all confused, but you know, the, you know, the point is they are uh, you know going after her, and even if they in their kangaroo court beat it, you, you you know what cops say? You beat the rap, you can't beat the ride. Yeah, well, uh, when you start saying vicarious liability, and that, that I'm not only going to sue you, son. I'm going to sue your boss and your boss's boss, and I and here it is, a 42 1983 lawsuit. They know what that is. If they don't, they'll have somebody tell them what it is, and they're going to back off real quick because right then they become personally responsible. They don't hide in the crowd anymore. And once they become personally responsible and it's their bank account, yeah. their pension, and their job, you know what their bosses are going to say? They're going to say, hey, we don't, you know, 
he, he was working out of bounds. He was on his, he or she were on their own. But the problem with that is a, a vicarious liability law, lawsuit says failure to properly supervise, failure to properly train. And that does not let the boss off the hook at that point. Well, I was a few years ago protesting Rick Perry and an Austin police commander came over with riot cops getting dressed. We were on the sidewalk, not blocking anything. And he said, I'm going to arrest you if you don't leave. And I said, well, Austin's lost lawsuits over this. And he said, I don't care. And this is on video. And I said, well, listen, I'm going to sue you personally. And I said, and, and he, and, and this went on. He said, I'm still going to arrest you. And I said, you go ahead. I'm in the right. You're in the wrong. Why on earth would you want to violate the First Amendment that protects you and your family? And he finally went away. Uh, but, I mean, it, it, cops just need to know the, the Bill of Rights and Constitution is there to protect them as well as everybody else. Well, the problem is oh, there's a lot of departments, especially your smaller ones, they get very little training on that. You know, they get a little bit of constitutional law when they go through the academy, and after that, except for once in a while at in service, they really don't get it reinforced. They're so busy with their nose and the municipal code and the state statutes that uh, uh, they don't pay any attention to, to the federal law. They don't pay attention to the constitutional law. You know, when Jack McLam was traveling all around, ha passing out uh, constitu you know, pocket constitutions and lecturing on that to police officers around the country, he, it was like he was he had a whole bunch of brand new rookies. That that didn't know any of any of that existed. So it's all in education and training and supervision. And if they don't get that, then that's what you're going to run into. And it's really bad in the rural areas and the small towns and the sheriff's departments. We've only got one more segment coming up, and I, there's so many issues I want to get in to, uh, to you, uh, Colonel Craig Roberts, RifleWarrior.com. I know you had a bunch of best-selling books, but do you even do you even sell books anymore there at the site? Well, there's there's. The, I've got the New York City books uh, through Simon and Schuster, you know, one shot, one kill, and you know, crosshairs on the kill zone, and that sort of thing. And then there's still a couple on the website, but Amazon's got the, a new release of the Medusa file out that uh, you can order through Amazon.com, and uh, it's it's got a new cover on it and everything. And the Medusa file is probably the one everybody really needs to read. Yeah, that's where you really get deep. You can learn a lot from that book about how this whole criminal global network uh, works. Colonel Craig Roberts uh, is our guest. Ron Paul is scheduled to be coming up. I got a million things running through my head. What should I ask him? Uh, boy, I tell you. <laughs> we'll, we'll be right back. Stay with us. Craig Roberts, in closing, wants to get into some new Oklahoma City developments. For those that don't know, he uh, worked the case and uh, also investigated the murder of police officer Terrence Yakey uh, by the feds, or cop of the year, who was one of the first on scene and actually saw what was going on. A lot of new developments uh, on Oklahoma City front. Uh, Colonel Craig Roberts, uh, you've been tracking this since it happened 16 years ago. Uh, what's the latest info? Well, you know, the, uh, there's, there's, there's a lot of questions that are coming up now on the Middle Eastern connection, which is what we were really leaning on back, you know, in 95 and 96, and that uh, Reno and, and, and Free and, and uh, Clinton all said there is no Middle Eastern connection, and at that point the FBI just, said, okay, we're not going to deal with it where there is no Middle Eastern connection. We'll go chase, you know, wild geese someplace else. Well, we have documents that have, that have surfaced from the Philippine Intelligence Services where Nichols, you know, had gone to the Philippines on several times, several occasions, did not have a job, had no money, yet he was able to fly back and forth to the Philippines, stay in hotels, and go to meetings with Abu Sayyaf. And the documents that surfaced from the Philippines named the names of who he met over there, and one of them was uh, uh, Muhammad Wali Khan, who was tied to with Sheikh Khalid Mohammed. Well, Sheikh Khalid Mohammed, of course, was you know one of the right hand men of, of uh, uh, in Al Qaeda, and uh, his his nephew was Ramsey Yosef, and Ramsey Yosef, whose real name was was Bassett, uh, was the planner for Operation Bojica, which was going to you know blow up tw uh, a dozen American jumbo jets, and that failed when his apartment caught fire. And they and the now you talked about this a decade ago, but 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 now more documents have come out. Right. But, but but people get confused. You're saying clearly ATF involved. You got McVeigh now. They got sworn affidavits from Nichols and others that he was sheep dipped out of special uh, operations. Uh, you've got German intelligence there. You got Jane Graham seeing McVeigh in the building, the gray sticks of butter. This is a classic criminal network operation because that's what Clinton would hire would be a group so that it's so confused. Just like with Kennedy, nobody can understand how it was run. Is that, I mean, is that where this is going? Well, yeah, pretty much it's, it's uh, you know, now we have documents that, that, that name and, and pretty much date Nichols in the Philippines meeting with, with members of al-Qaeda. And, and it goes all the way to a guy named, that then we called Osama bin Laden with a U, uh, which is his actual real name, and they changed it to Osama some, sometime later on. 
In fact, I even mentioned him in the Medusa file back before 9-11. No one ever acted like they ever heard of this guy before, but we stumbled onto him. But anyway, we've got those documents showing there's a definite Middle Eastern connection. It goes to where? Pakistan. And it goes to uh, the the area between the Pakistan border and and, uh, the Afghan border, and then across the border into the terrorist training camps that were originally set up by the CIA to train the Mujahideen to fight the Russians. And, And we've got all of this evidence, plus we've got the names of Americans that are involved. Uh, that ran a travel service to the Philippines out of Scottsdale, Arizona. And all of this, was, you know, uh, uh, a lot of this uh, went to Jana Davis, and Jana took it to the U.S. attorney, took it to the FBI. They didn't want to see it. They didn't want to touch it. They didn't, it's a, it was Craig, we're almost out of time. From your deep research of this, uh, best we can tell, who was running the operation? How were the different players involved? Well, you know, it, it's hard to put your finger on who exactly pushed the green button that said, said make it go, but we know who was covering up the operation, and that tells us a lot. You've got the entire Clinton regime that covered up the actual leads to the Oklahoma City bombing. You had special agents of the FBI out of, out of uh, New York, I think it was, that came in and refused to investigate those the, the actual leads that we came up. We've got the head of counterterrorism was there the night before and got caught lying about it. Well, and we got you know we've had them change reports, change witness statements, intimidate witnesses. Terrence Yankee, of course, he ended up dead. Uh, several other people ended up dead that, that saw things they shouldn't have seen that talked about it. Jane Graham, who saw Andrea Strassmeyer in the basement of the of the Murrah building. We've got all of these things, but you can't get anybody to do anything about it because that tells you if you do do something about it, it's going to lead someplace uh, to a... What does that mean power. when you got Muslim extremists, terrorists, you got German intelligence, you got McVeigh running around, you got the ATF running around? I mean, it's incredible. Yeah, and, and you know, it, it's it's a soup sandwich. And the thing about this, when you do come up with good leads and you've got the federal government who refuses to address those leads, who doesn't want to see it, doesn't want to touch it, that tells me everything I need to know. You know, if I'm going to arrest a guy and I can't get the prosecutor to go along with it, I'm powerless. Incredible. Um, And, of course, you know about uh, the the, uh, case uh, where uh, lawyers have been getting... uh, different FBI documents where one set's blacked out in one area, the other in the other, and they're able to put them together and find out that the Southern Poverty Law Center was basically running Elohim City. Oh, yeah. They, the, Andrew Strassmeyer was, was reporting straight to the Southern Poverty Law Center. I mean, those people are the ones that derailed the investigation. Uh, they actually uh, had the whole thing twist away from the Middle Eastern connections and the, and the, the actual what the witnesses actually saw, uh, you know, at the scene. And they twisted it all around to where it was all Elohim City and bank robbers and yada yada, which was a false flag, false front, false lead to the very beginning. All right, Colonel Roberts, look forward to having you back soon. God bless you, my friend. Ron Paul's coming up. Colonel, we'll talk to you soon. Have a great uh, week. Keep your bandit sharp. All right, buddy.